All right, the next subject is batteries. Uh, we have five EverStart Max Series Marine batteries. These are not deep cycle, nor are they starting. They're a hybrid between starting and deep cycle. So they have deep cycle properties and also the ability to put out large amperages just like a starting battery. If you punch the numbers, these are about a 75 amp hour capacity battery, all 12 volt, wired in parallel. So the voltage stays at 12 volt, but we get capacity beyond belief. They're low maintenance. Uh, some things that people do is they use car batteries or truck batteries, which I am guilty of that out in my shed. Uh, but that is not a critical application. Uh, you have to use some sort of uh, 12 volt, well not 12 volt, but a, a deep cycle type of battery. Um, or a marine battery at least. Uh, these cost about uh, 70 to $80 at Walmart. I buy them. And they're not that bad. Uh, one thing you do have to remember is the negative side of your battery bank, if you're doing this for a large scale, has to be grounded to earth through a ground rod. Alright, the next topic of discussion is my transfer switch and sub-panel. Alright, uh, just like if you were going to have a generator on your property, you need to isolate it from your to utility company through a transfer switch. And uh, your load operates either by utility power or in my case, the inverter power. Uh, this is the key piece of equipment. It allows you to isolate things and you either are going to operate on ut inverter power or utility power and this totally isolates everything uh, usually this has to be installed by a qualified electrician along with your sub panel I took a, a few breakers out of my actual main service panel I'm going to call these the green circuits uh, they are mainly for lighting circuits uh, my house was wired very nicely where most of my lighting circuits were on their own separate breaker. So I currently have five circuits just for lighting, uh, anywhere from upstairs to downstairs. Basement lights, kitchen lights, washroom lights, fire room, and uh, bedroom, bath, and hall lights. These are all on their own breaker out of the panel. And these, you, well, the, uh, the transfer switch is fed by a 100 amp circuit breaker, uh, a double, that you goes into your transfer switch and you can either select from utility power or the inverted power that we make through our renewable energy source. And that goes up to the circuits dedicated by this, which is just like having them in your utility box, no different. Like I said before, this is a totally off-grid system. We do not sell any power back to the electrical company. In fact, we are totally isolated, like I just mentioned. Now, in the event of all hell breaking loose, say you do not have any wind, any sun, for many days, or if you want to do maintenance on the system, just to say, you can actually flip this switch, and anything you have on this sub-panel will go back to utility power. So that's a good thing. If anything ever happens for any reason at all, you can't piss anybody off in the house. They're always going to have power. The second feature I have is a 30 amp breaker right there with the battery CH on it. As I told you before, the DR2412 series inverter also has a built in 120 amp battery charger feature. So if for some reason you need to charge your batteries, say you don't have any wind or sun and you'd like to maintain them, or just let's just say that you have a giant storm coming and you know that power is probably going to be out, you can go ahead and throw this breaker. And we'll flip the transfer switch back there. This will instantaneously allow you to run anything that the inverter runs on regular power and also charge the batteries at a rapid rate. Uh, very useful, like I say, if you got a storm coming and you know you want to have all your power and or you just have some bad week where it's, it's cloudy and rainy and crappy out. Alright, everybody that comes downstairs is very interested in the panel mount 
gauges and different switches and knobs that we have down here. The first one we got is the solar array volts. That is the raw voltage from the roof coming downstairs. Uh, right now it's under load, so it's about 12 volts. Uh, I guess the next one we got here is our battery bank volts. Uh, this tells you exactly how many volts are in the battery bank. Of course it is labeled red, yellow, and green. And I don't know if you can see that very well if it will focus. But there's red dashes. Uh, the red dash in the yellow indicates 12 volts exactly. And the red dash in the green indicates 14.4 volts or the maximum. The inverter itself actually shuts off at 10.5 volts. So if you ever have uh, anything that goes bad, you know, 10.5 volts is when you're going to shut down. Uh, this is the AC amps. This is connected between the inverter and the transfer switch. Uh, right now we really have nothing running except to one light, uh, which is drawing so little it doesn't even move the needle. Uh, but this inverter will put up 2400 watts. I'm not quite sure how many amps it is at the moment. But uh, you'll be able to see this needle swing as more lights in the house get turned on. All right, these two gauges and panels are for the wind generators outside, or the wind turbines. I got the west wind generator, which currently there's no wind outside. But I got this nifty little gauge for 0 to 30 amps. And yes, it will peak past 30 during a windstorm. And the, what's called a run switch, or a stop switch, whatever you want to call it. Up is run. Middle is free will, and down is in the stop. It will lock the blades in a, a position magnetically and will not allow the wind turbine to move. This is good if you know you're going to have one hell of a storm or if you want to actually do maintenance and you don't want the blades spinning while you're up there next to it. And this is also for the north wind generator. Uh, pretty much the same thing, same setup. Run freewheel and stop and those are hooked up right to their own breakers and the DC breaker box it's about three o'clock in the morning uh, we got a storm coming in here and I just came downstairs to check the uh, amperage readings on the windmills they seem to be kicking out quite a bit of power here in these wind gusts averaging about 10 amps for both of them Might not be able to see it very well, but we got a pretty good lightning storm going on here. A uh, nice little storm with some good wind going through. For the price, uh, we got about a $3,000 tax return, and we said we're going to spend all $3,000 bettering ourselves for the future in the house. So we put at least $3,000 forward, and we bought all of our things, and it ended up being about $6,000 all in total. From all the nuts and bolts, wire connectors, screws, pieces of wood, you name it, all the little extra things that you never think you're going to buy. I'd say about six thousand dollars what we we racked up. If you have any questions or comments about anything you've seen in this video, please email me at my email address, shoner at shonerboner.com. S H O N E R at S H O N E R B O N E R dot com. Or visit my website and you can check out the wind cam or progress and more photographs and detail about the solar system.